In this video, I'll walk you through setting up your Mac so that Notical can communicate with your sequencer or your soft synths, and I'll also look at how to set up Logic in particular to work together with Notical and how to use MIDI synchronization for best effect. I'll also try and offer a couple of hints and tips along the way that might help smooth your workflow and make things easier for you. In all of these videos, I'll be using OS X Tiger and Logic 8, but the principles are exactly the same for earlier versions of Logic and for Leopard, although the interfaces might be slightly different. To communicate with another MIDI device, real or software, Notical and that device need to share a MIDI port. Now for hardware devices connected to your Mac, this is already sorted out by Core Audio. If you have a MIDI port connected to your Mac and Core Audio knows about it, Notical can see it and address it. For software like Logic or for soft synths like Absynth or Contact, you need first to install a virtual MIDI port that Notical and the Synth or Logic can use to talk to each other. For most users, in most circumstances, this is already installed as part of Core Audio. It's called the IAC driver, but by default this is disabled. To enable it, go to the Utilities folder which is nested inside your Applications folder and launch the Audio MIDI Setup application. Click on the MIDI tab, which is where all the MIDI ports connected to your Mac are listed, and as you can see this Mac has quite a few extra ports connected. But the bit we are interested in is over here. Double click on the IAC icon, select Enable this device and close, and that's it. The default settings work fine. When you open Notical, you will see that the IAC driver is listed at the bottom of the available MIDI ports list. You just select it as the MIDI output port, set your soft synth or your door to receive on this port and the link is established. Most of the time this will work fine. However, there are some circumstances in which the IAC driver will simply not play nicely with other installed software. Specifically, Users who have a Novation keyboard that uses Automap will find that the IAC driver conflicts with the Automap server software. Applications that use Rewire, as the Automap server does, might also throw up problems. If you fall into that group, and sadly I do, then you need to go to Plan B and use MIDI Pipe. MIDI Pipe is a freeware utility. You can get it from here or simply by searching the web. The MIDI Pipe author is an active contributor on the Big Blue Lounge website and that's the best source for help and advice about the application and it's also a really good resource for information about audio on OS X in general. MIDI Pipe offers a lot of features but for our use, at its most simple, it provides a junction box giving us a virtual MIDI port that Notical can use and can share with any other software MIDI application on your Mac. To set MIDI Pipe up Simply launch the application and drag MIDI in and MIDI out. Save this setup as a preset. If you like, you can drop the save preset onto your dock to make it easy and quick to launch. Obviously, you need to launch this preset first before you launch Notical or indeed Logic. However, I don't recommend you put it in your startup group to launch it automatically at boot time. MIDI Pipe is very reliable and robust but the only time I've personally had any problem with it was when I included it in the startup group. Once this MIDI pipe is active, it shows up in both Notical and your synth or in Logic. Select it as Notical's output and you're in business. I'm now going to look specifically at how to set up Logic to work with Notical standalone. For my money, this is by far the best way to unleash the power of Notical using it in standalone version with MIDI Sync, allowing Logic to act as the hub to talk to everything else that you might have in your studio. If you have enabled the IAC driver or MIDI pipe, then Logic will find those virtual ports on startup and include them in its available inputs and outputs. If you're a power user, or if you have a particularly complex studio setup, there are some helpful tweaks you can make in Logic's MIDI environment, but I'll save those for a later tutorial. To get us started, the default environment settings are fine. Now as default, Logic diverts all incoming MIDI data to the currently active track, because this is probably what you want when driving Logical from a MIDI keyboard controller with a single MIDI channel. However, with Notical, which offers 16 possible channels of control, it's definitely not what you want. 
so you need to sort logic out to work in multi-track mode. To do this, I'll open a blank song in Logic. As you can see, Logic 8 offers to create instruments for you at the outset, and we can use this feature to set up 16 software instrument tracks. Sadly, these will all be set to receive on all MIDI channels, which again is not what we want. So we've got to use the inspector panel to set each of these to a separate MIDI channel. Once you've done that, if you go to the project settings menu, which used to be called the song settings in earlier versions of Logic, and select the recording tab, check this box, auto demix by channel if multi-track recording. This will ensure that incoming MIDI data is sorted and sent to channel strips according to their assigned MIDI channel. Finally, back in the arrange window, you need to arm recording for all the tracks that you will be using. If you don't do this, the incoming MIDI data will not be demixed and the results aren't very good. For all of this to work in a predictable way when you are back in Nautical, you need to make sure that you declare which MIDI channel each voice line in Nautical will use. That takes care of the basic input side of Logic. The next step is to sort out MIDI synchronisation. Nautical Standalone works best with Logic and any other sequencer I could think of when it's slaved to a clock signal. Once you've set this up, the transport controls in Logic will work Nautical automatically and both applications will run at exactly the same tempo. To make all this magic happen, you need to set Logic to generate a clock signal, send it to the right port and have Nautical listen to that port for the clock. Again, we go back to the project or song settings. Select the Synchronisation option and click on the MIDI tab. If you've got a simple setup, just use the drop-down menu here to send the clock to the virtual MIDI port being used by Nautical. If you have a more complex setup, say with hardware synths that you might want to clock at the same time, it's actually more efficient to have Logic send MIDI clock to all ports rather than specify individual ports. So the rule of thumb is if it's just for Nautical, specify that port. If you want to include other synths in your rack, send the clock to all ports. Once you've done all that, save this song as a template so you don't have to go through this every time you want to make some music. In earlier versions of Logic, just save it as a blank song and load it up. Back in Nautical, just ensure that you select the correct port as the MIDI input here so that Nautical can receive the clock. Tick the sync box and of course don't forget to press play to put Nautical into listen mode. 